Mother pus bucket. Hole. Oh my god. I got sorry. I got excited. I knocked the power cord out of the camera. Hey guys, it's Chris, and today we're gonna be working on something really cool. This little board is gonna change the life of your Amiga. What is it? This is called the Pi Storm, and uh it's a project that is an adapter board uh, that's meant to be paired with a Raspberry Pi. This is currently a Model 3A. Um, it goes in the dip socket of your 68000, this way. And uh, it's intended to be a CPU replacement, but it does so much more. So there's a website that I will link in the description below which explains all of this probably 312.8 times better than I can. Basically this will map kickstart ROMs um, from 1.3 through 3.1. I don't know if they've tested 3.14 yet. It would prefer to use an Amiga 1200 3.1 kickstart ROM because it has the, the best uh, automatic boot config and stuff like that. You can also map RAM, uh, Zora 2, Zora 3, or CPU RAM. It has a uh, retargetable graphics ability. Also virtual SCSI disks for use with uh, like uh, RDB disk images, physical devices connected to the Pi that you can use on the Amiga, like uh, something you plug into the USB probably or the internal SD card most likely. It also can, in the future, they're hoping to get the networking done. Now this is evolving daily. Uh, the team, you can reach them on their Discord server or through the GitHub page. There's a link to the Discord server which I will link in the description below. So I have three of these to build and uh, what it will do is it will sit on top, this is a Raspberry Pi 3A. You put a little SD card in. Now there's some pre-configuration to do on the Pi side first, and we'll get into that in just a minute. And then this will have a GPIO header where this will sit like this. This will just sit in the Amiga socket. Your HDMI will go for RTG out. Otherwise, it's going to use the Amiga's native video. This can work both ways. This does not take over your system like a vampire, the standalone. This still lets your Amiga be an Amiga. This is a super duper CPU in base form and that's what we're going to do today. We're going to do the vanilla build. We're not going to get into virtual hard drives. We're not going to get into the advanced features of changing CPU types. Well, I'll probably, I'll put it to an 030 probably because by stock the default config is an 020 and no FPU MMU. If you change the CPU type, of course, you get those advanced features. Without further ado, let's get started. I have some toys. We're gonna have to go grab an Amiga out of the back. So we're gonna grab another turd, one of the ones that I don't really show on the channel, but it's like my, my work test rig, I guess you could call it. So we have to put a female GPIO on here, and we'll need to solder that in. Holy God. Anyway, I'll need both sides. Snip off what I don't use and solder these in. So I got three of these boards to build and let's get to it. Okay, here we are. I got some more parts laid out and I needed a, uh, for now, just for me, so far, a 64 gig to start micro SD card. It was $7.99 for Micro Center. I got myself a little card reader. I'm gonna stick it in here and hopefully not break it. And we're gonna put this in my Ubuntu machine right here. And throw the soldering iron off for a second. And what we're gonna do is turn this monitor so you can see it. Now I'm on the GitHub page. I'll link it in the description below. Step one says, uh, Kind of what the project is, the Amiga specific functionality. A quick start, download the Raspberry Pi OS from RPI, Software Operating Systems. The light version is recommended. Awesome. 
What I do for this is I go to Raspberry Pi Imager, choose OS, Raspberry Pi Other, and choose Raspberry Pi Lite. Choose my storage, this, write, yes, put a password in, and it begins. So while that is downloading and writing, that is step one. And to be safe, you can wear one of these anti-static prison bracelets. I like to, because I'm always in my pajamas, like usual, put it on like a prison ankle bracelet, clip it to the under metal side, which is grounded out to my house ground. I don't know if that really makes a difference, but it made me feel 3.14% better. Okay, now that I can sort of see with this thing on, how you doing? I'm going to zap in this GPIO connector. The GPIOs are done and you can go ahead and get your wife's toothbrush and a little bit of IPA and clean off your flux. The GPIO is on. That way a Raspberry Pi would actually sit in here like so. Okay? But I'm not ready for that yet. We have to put the pins in for the 68000 socket. While we're waiting on that, we're going to check on our image. Raspberry Pi OS has been written to the SD card. You can now remove the SD reader. There we go. So there's my little card right in here. And it's going to go inside of a Raspberry Pi. It's a Raspberry Pi 3A, $25. We're going to grab the second Raspberry Pi. And put it in. Whoops. Put the SD card in this one. We're going to get the GPIO or the 68,000 socket pins in here. These are not round pins. They're round, but they're not. Holy crap. That's one half, and it doesn't fit well because these are square heads. And I needed round, and I ordered round, and they sent me square. Yay. Let me dig through the old parts bin and see if I have round pins because that's going to put a tremendous hamper on things. If you're in doubt, you can put it in the table and just give it the old Tanya. That's fun. Give me a second, I'm going to push all these through. You can fit a uh, square pig in a round hole. I grabbed them and shoved them through individually just for my own. I mean, they're mine, so it doesn't really matter. Holy crap. So anyway, here we go. 68 pins all protruding through. Not soldered in because they're so tight. I'm going to be changing them. Oh, man. I'm going to be changing them out. I just knocked over all my screws. Don't be like me, but I'm impatient and now we take our Raspberry Pi 3 and I'm going to hook this sucker up because we got to do some Raspberry Pi stuff. And so here's our assembled Pi Storm. Let's just let's just clean up all five. So I have power via the USB Pi's booting. It'll load Linux because uh, remember, this is a blank build, so it's automatically because it's Raspberry Pi OS, which is Debian. Uh, same thing I use for Pi Mega. It's going to boot. You're going to see Linux load. And all I need to do at this point is run Raspberry Config, set up my Wi-Fi, and then we're going to SSH into it from the actual Linux box, Windows PC, or your Mac. Login is Pi. Password is Raspberry. Oops. All right, now we're in. So we're going to run Raspberry Config. Same normal things. We're going to go into System Options, Wireless LAN, United States, or your own country. Enter your ID. Enter your password. Go into uh, Display. I'm going to leave on Preferred. Uh, interface options, we're going to turn on SSH. 
We're going to go into localization options. Number five here. Let me zoom in. Set your locale. By default, since these are British, it's going to be an EN uh, GB UTF-8. For me, I'm EN US. So I'm going to hit the space bar, uncheck that one, and I'm going to check the US UTF-8. If I can find it. I'm probably right on it. There it is. Hit OK, say none, give it a second to do its thing. Alright, once again, localization, time zone. We're going to be Merca. Whoops, I'm just going to do New York. Once again, localization options, keyboard. I'm going to leave alone. Wi Fi country, US. I think I might have did this. Did I do this? I don't know. And say finish. Reboot now? Yes. Remember, we're still on Linux, we're still on the little Pi. So once again, login is Pi, password Raspberry. And I'm going to run ifconfig. Now, what I'm looking for is the IP address. I'm 1.84. So now, if I don't burn myself on my soldering iron, I'm going to go back to my Linux box, 1.84. Just scoot this out of the way. This and I'm going to open up a terminal. I can even close the raspy flasher. I'm going to go ssh pi at 192.168.1.84 what was it, 84? and then say yes and then password raspberry. Now I am remote controlling basically the pi that's this from my main computer. On the Pi Storm page, it's going to give you what to do. Log in as Raspberry Pi, enable Wi Fi, enable SSH, blah, blah, blah. We need to install stuff. So we're going to copy these things from my computer here and just paste them. And it's going to put the things we need the Raspberry config or the, the Git and all that stuff. Say yes. Failed to install, not found. Oh man, let's get app get update. It needs an update. All right, and now we're gonna try to install Git. Now I'm just repeating the second step to clone the Git. So step three is to install the libsdl2-dev. There we go, how's that? I made it big. Now with that done, uh, we're going to type the word make. Make is going to compile the PyStorm emulator. This may take a few minutes. Next step after we make, it says follow the instructions uh, to exit the NRC. Type sudo dot slash emulator and hit enter. sudo dot slash emulator. Alright. So there we go, got 120 mega Z3 fast RAM configured, blah 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 blah. That's great. Control C. Alright. So that worked. Now the next step it says is to scroll down and follow the plan for the FPGA bitstream update. So we have to do this sudo app get install open OCD. run the FPG update with sudo nprog.sh so we're going to copy that and paste that in programming failed if you're running a RevB EPM 240 PyStorm board run the 240 script alright so we'll run that one I don't know what board I'm running Oop, wrong keyboard <laughs> there it goes okay shut down command invoke so apparently I'm running version 2. So if you're running the first revision of the board, you run the first one, then you run version EPM240 PyStorm, which is apparently the one I have, it doesn't have any markings on it, um, run the 240. So, our CPLD has been programmed successfully. I'm going to flip to HDMI to see what it does, because if you're an Amiga user and you just want to flip it on and use it, you don't want to watch Linux load, and no, it's not auto-logging in. So what I'm going to do sudo raspy config system options 
and I'm going to go to boot auto login and text console automatically login as the Pi user and I'm going to reboot. That way I don't have to let it log in every time and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit rc.local and that's kind of like your startup sequence of Linux and I'm going to tell it to run this emulator on startup. That way every time the Amiga is turned on the Pi turns on and auto does its thing. I don't have to wait for all this Linux crap. Alright, so it logged in. So we're going to go into the etc directory and we're going to do a sudo nano uh, what is it called? rc.local that is the startup script. So we're going to do cd uh, home pi storm sudo dot slash emulator control x to save and reboot. I just want to see if it works. This should auto log in and should auto run the emulator. I am no expert on PyStorm. This is my first time even messing with it. It's brand new. So you're learning just like I'm learning. I know enough about the Linux stuff because of building Pymega. So a lot of this is the same. Yep, there we go. Didn't do a config file. Uh, failed to load the kick.rom rom mapping. No problem. So it's pretty much ready to go. I can break that and run it manually. And, it, and I'm going to go grab an Amiga, a real Amiga. Whoops, like a 500. Say hi to Bob. Bob is an Amiga 500 that hasn't been seen on my channel before. Bob's got the old Wi Fi keyboard here. Not real Wi Fi, just I don't have a keyboard. I have a keyboard. Hang on. Just put that on the floor. Alright, Bob is uh, A372A Agnes. Uh, version 69 6 6a 68a 6 a, I don't know this thing is a 6 I can't really see that tiny um so let's say rev 6 it has uh 204 roms 37.175 Motorola 68000 and showies all right so there's a uh, that this is like this this is going to sit in here like that. Yeah, it just doesn't go in. It doesn't want to grab. It's grabbing on this side, but it's probably because my ghetto butt used square pins. I mean, it's in pretty well. Just like that, I found a keyboard. So I'm going to do the right thing and take the receipt I used for Micro Center and just stick it right there. You can see it moves. I'm going to plug this in. This is the HDMI to the same thing. So this will be the Amiga side, hitting the button. It takes a little bit longer because I know the Pi side is booting. The Amiga video will come on the start in a second. And I'm going to put a freaking floppy disk in of something. Bingo. I haven't even gotten to anything major yet. This is just, I built it, I plugged it in, I flashed the CPLD, and uh, Bob's your uncle. I actually have an Uncle Bob, by the way. Alright, so here's Amiga Workbench 205, 204. I redid everything with three. You know what? Let's use Workbench 1.3. Just want to see what the hell happens. Workbench 1.3 loaded with. I didn't plug the mouse in. With 135 megs of RAM, and I don't have a I don't have a 501 in here, so it has 512k a chip. Even though it has a one meg Agnes, I don't have a 501. I have one. I'd have to go dig it out, and that way I'd have one mega chip. But that kind of covers it. So the Pi Storm is working. I've done nothing as far as you know, internal SD card emulated booting, super fast hard drives. You saw what I did. I built it, I stuck it in, I did the Linux commands, and that's it. I'm going to remove this disk, and I'm going to reboot, and let it boot at the ROM screen. From this, from this aspect, what do I got? I basically have a slightly accelerated Amiga. Now, I am learning this just as you are. I'm going to plug in a GoTech. Okay, so we're going to boot off DF1, which is Amiga Test Kit. For a 68020 with 128 megs of RAM, 
0 0.5 mega chip, no slow. Remember, unbelly slotted Amiga 500. Up one menu. So, real quick, if you wanted to use this as just an Amiga accelerator, you can. I'm going to edit this config file, and I'm going to crank the speed on this baby up. Um, audio. Still using Paula. Floppy drive. DF1. Sounds good. It's going to yell it's a go tech. That's fine. Video. RGB is working. Standard Amiga uh, port. I'm not using the HDMI off of the Pi yet. I don't know if I'm going to on this video. Um, CIA. I'm NTSC, so sometimes they run fast. Okay. Everything's fine. Battery backed up. Whoops. Battery backed up. Clock is on the Pi. Look at that. It grabbed the date and time from the network from the Pi. That is great. That is awesome. You don't need a battery backed up clock. It's running off the Pi's network time. Uh, Denise, Lisa, FFF, 030. OCS chipset. Alright. What else can I do? I need a sysinfo run. This is sysinfo running on a GoTech in DF1. Set patch executed. Identified the kickstart, which is the ROM that's in the board. Run sysinfo automatically. So we're coming up as a PAL. Uh, standard Denise. Agnes 1 Meg. 68020. No FPU. This is just stock config on base Pi Storm. Memory, 128 meg of 32-bit fast RAM. Incredible. 512k a chip. Okay. Here we go. Speed, 792 megahertz. Mother pus bucket. Hole. Oh, my God. I got, sorry, I got excited. I knocked the power cord out of the camera. 792 megahertz. But it's a no 20. That can't be right. Uh, this is the new one, so it'll show you in the thousands. This is no, uh, Pymega, but it's okay. How am I 792 when it just says Motorola? And wouldn't it say Call Me Now, uh, Virtual Amiga or something? Yeah, I don't know. We're 30 times faster than a 7 megahertz, so, yeah, not that fast. Um, we're not even as fast as a 4,000, but... You know, it's 16 MIPS, no mega flops, and uh, interesting. Interesting. It's pretty cool, right? That's cool. 16,203 dry stones. We can configure the CPU and other stuff in Linux, which is what we're going to do right this second. We're going to change that sucker to an 030. We're going to run sudo, whoops, sudo nano default config. Okay, here's where you map your kickstart ROM. Not doing that. 128 megs of RAM. Z3 fast. Set CPU. 30. I'm going to be nice and be 030. It is a Pi 3 Alpha. It's looking for kick.rom. So get your 3.1 ROM and put kick.rom in there. I'm just changing the CPU type. Enable RTG, sweet. Pi SCSI. How would that work? Hard drive files, up to seven map drives. Not working at network, okay, that's fine. So future is gonna be networking, nice. I'm just changing the CPU type. I'm going to shut this down nice. Alright, and I'm going to turn off the Amiga. We're going to go back to the actual Amiga. Turning it on again. Now the Pi's got to load first and I shut it down nicely. Now listen, I am not a Pi Storm expert. I'm going to reach out to the crew on their Discord server. I'll provide links in the description below sysinfo.d0.se download your ADF of this so just changing that config for a 6830 now I have an MMU and an FPU that was easy let's hit her hit her give her the onions 
speed. Trying to get the whole winder in view there. Did it do any better? Yeah, we got mega flops now. 725 megahertz. I don't know. Motor rolling. 68030, 6881, and a 6830 MMU not in use. 30 times faster than an A600. Uh, Still not 4,000, but we're 3.49 times faster than the old uh, 3,000. Cheers to you, Pie Storm team. Now, it's not a vampire, but, God, you know how much this cost me? Pretty cool. Right now, I'm just rocking regular Amiga stuff. We're not getting into virtual hard drives. We just are, like I said before, flashing the pie, putting the pins in, squishing it, into the CPU socket and uh, firing it up, enjoying it. I changed one file to make it an 030 and if I had a hard drive on here it would use it. I could be real Amiga still, 030, emulated everything, replacing the CPU. Or you can roll full RTG, shoot around another HDMI port on here, some kind of switch box like the Vampire uses. Switch box it between this and that and magic. It's up to you what you want to do. By the way, I went and got an A501 so I can have a mega chip RAM. Hey, look at that. There we go. And in my next video, as I learn more, I'm going to go on Discord, thank the guys, number one, and read some more documentation. Because right now, I'm a Pi Storm noob. There are no videos on this thing. I looked. Couple reviews, Tom's Hardware did a good one. You want to check him out? If you can buy one, buy a Pi Storm board that someone has already put the proper sockets on, and possibly even a Pi 3 Alpha, fired her right up, put her all together for you. I mean, that's going to be pretty good. One Meg Agnes, let's see what my memory is looking like now. Memory 120 megs of RAM. 1 mega chip RAM, so that 501 does still work. Boards, uh, 128 meg Pi board, Zoro 3 RAM. Now, Pi 3A fits. Pi 4, Pi 3B plus, they got the heat sinks and stuff, and it won't fit in here. If you have a 2000, you're in the house. Why is that? You saw that red board I had. For the 2000 where you can stick the CPU socket in, you can load that sucker up with some fat cards because you're in a big box, Amiga. You can roll with that. 3A, still nice and thin. It's almost like a compute board, actually. It's just, there's nothing on here. So, that's cool. Uh, impressions. My first impressions. Simple. More simple than I thought. My, the hardest part and the biggest complaint I have were these. These are the pin headers I used for the CPU uh, socket. It would have been nice if I could have actually used uh, the turn pins from my 68,000 socket or even a 68,000 socket but it just doesn't fit. Um, these are round machine pins. Square plugs don't go into round holes and I ordered round pins. I could show you the eBay order. Round pins. Um, yep. So we'll replace those. That's why I didn't solder it in. They were just force fed. And it works. I'll solder in the round ones. The round ones will go into regular sockets. Now it does go into a stock 68,000 socket with the square pins. But you're going to be fighting her. Got to give it the old Tanya sometimes. You don't want to crack it. It's fragile. Frontier Elite 2. With audio. Just want to see the intro. You see the old GoTek go Tekken down here. So that is a one beer build, but it was about an hour, I'd say. And most of that was new blurn. Yeah, check it out. And it's running a pal. Sweet. See how it'll Mega 500, man. No problems. Smooth as butter. Incredible, incredible freaking work, Pi Storm team. You just cornered the market 
on accelerators stores will be buying these non-stop I know you guys want JLPCB to make them and you want to open it up dude you're sitting on a freaking pile of gold I'm impressed I'm happy I'm on noob level 2 I'm gonna get on the discord learn a little more about this but hey check it out if you are interested in getting a Pi Storm for yourself, join the Discord server linked right down in the description below. There's a group by room where you can sign up for your country. Now, CPLDs apparently have done went and dried up everywhere. I don't know. And there might be a little bit of a delay. Some of our retailer resellers are uh, soldering on the adapters for people and contacting you from your waiting list position and it's not too bad uh, price what did I pay for this well things are not included the blank PCB CPLD with the chips put on it was twenty five dollars and five dollars to ship five eighty to ship so let's say thirty one dollars for this I purchased uh, a Raspberry Pi 3 Alpha for $24.99 from Micro Center. I also purchased, now I had to do this, $5.99 for some GPIOs. I bought two bags of these. I used half a one for those two. Uh, the pins, I purchased the CPU pins, what I said, SIL turn pin. So with the pins and the Pi and everything and the GPIO and the flashed 64 gig or whatever you want SD, 55, 60 bucks. So you can set your heart on $75. Let's just say. I'm just shooting numbers. I don't know. Let's just say roughly $75 shipped to you. Completed. Maybe. 100 bucks? Is it worth it? How much does a vampire cost? How much does this cost? Now performance wise, this is not a vampire. But as these things become more available, if I want a faster CPU, I just take this off and put something else on. Pi 3, B, 4, Pi 5, I don't know. Just shooting ideas here. Vampire's limited by that. That's it. Pi Storm gets its processing power from a Pi. I did not do the ROM. I did not do the ROM files. I did not do anything. I left the default config rolling. I used the wrong pins. I noob leveled this thing perfectly and I got through it. It was uh, not scary. It's a little bit of Linux commands, but if you can read and you can right-click copy and right-click paste, the instructions are very clear on how to get a basic initial setup. So anything in the Amiga uh, 500, 500 plus, or the 2000 range, anybody that uses the big old 68000 socket. Final impressions, what a great piece of technology. Uh, this is new, 2020, late 2020, 2021. There are many people out there with these boards that know way more than I do. But from a noob user's perspective, building this and configuring the software and installing it in an actual real Amiga and not doing anything and setting it up and booting and playing a game and running some stuff and loading Workbench using native Amiga uh, hardware. If I had a hard drive off of here, I'm sure it would load just fine. I did not put a ROM. It's using a 2.04 ROM it found on the actual Amiga motherboard. We had sound, we had peripheral access, we had chipset access. It's 100% compatible in what I ran. That's it. So, you know, this is going to be a direct competitor for the Apollo Vampire. So, with snap on, snap off upgrade for CPUs, and you got this thing in your socket, it's an FPGA. I have a Vampire. I love it. I don't consider it changing my Amiga at all. Who gives a frog's fat butt?
because it's yours. You can do with it what you want. If you're so worried about FPGA, go run Win UAE and yank it. How about that? But for us people with actual hardware, get yourself one of these. Sign up for the waiting list or the, the, the group buy. Dude, these are cheap. Shoot, I could buy 20 of these to the price of one vampire. Probably more. That's 16 Amigas. Most of them have this socket. This is incredible. Thank you, PyStorm team. Thank you for creating this. And thank you for everyone for helping me acquire these and get it all set up. So watch out, Team Apollo. There's a storm coming. Thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something.